Go for it. Okay. State your government name, occupation, <laughs> and social security number. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> okay, state your name. Uh, I'm Dustin. Okay. Hello. Introducing Dustin, Mr. Good Vibes Morris, a.k.a. Professor Good Vibes, a.k.a. The Field God, a.k.a. The Dungeons and Dragons Extraordinaire, a.k.a. Sir Hikes a Lot, a.k.a. The Maniac from Maine, a.k.a. Ed Sheeran Some Limestone, a.k.a. The Knockcloth Nanny. Cool. Um, then what are the formations that we're looking at right now? Yeah, there's a handful of formations in this area that we're studying. I'll say... Yeah, the main main ones that are relevant are the Remhukta, the Blaskrons, and the Sibisis. And what are what are the rocks that comprise those formations? The Remhukta is mostly a shale unit and is thought to be before the glacial event that we're interested in studying. The Blaskrons is what we call diamictite, which is a mix of coarse grain boulders with some shale. Thought to be actually glaciogenic or glacially related deposits. And then the Sibisis, the basal part, includes what we call the cap carbonate, which is a dolomite unit that is the focus of our study. Above that, there are some shales and limestones as well. Cool. Okay. And what, what does your work have to do with these units? Yeah, so what we're primar- our primary interest is the cap carbonate of the Sibisis. This is a very unusual carbonate unit that's put right over these glacial rocks, which doesn't normally happen because glacial rocks is from a cold time period carbonates are usually a warm time period and this is all is related to what we call the uh, era of snowball earth where the entire earth was covered in glaciers about 635 million years ago and then relatively rapidly it all melted out into a warm hothouse and we're trying to figure out exactly how that transition happened with both in terms of speed and how things like sea level history occurred during that fate, that transition. And the cap carbonate, we hope, will help us answer those questions. Cool. And is there something is there something unique about why we have to be all the way here to study this? Well, there's cap carbonates all around the world. And the unique aspect of these cap carbonates, I would say, is simply that they haven't been studied well before. And so it opens a new, a fresh look at these rocks that have been studied elsewhere, but we can have an, a new take on it. Cool. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yes, the boy stepped in the fountain of youth, and now I'm about to travel up to the mountain of truth. So with some rust, listen to the story they tell about some of earth and how in the end warm prevail for me the journey to document Dustin's work. He's some deeper laugh a little, get in tune with the earth. Journey of a student trying to get his PhD. Who's got more face than character made by Stan Lee. This is Namibia through my eyes. An experience that they could never deny. Okay, so Like they're just carrying these little tiny pieces of what the like individual seeds or something. <laughs> oh my, that's cute.
So like, beyond this cliff where you can't see, you end up having the, the proper camp carbonate really folded up, uh -huh. and kind of tapering off. And then, here you have the, the top bilson, that's no lab. Below it, the orange, the less cliffy orange stuff is the limestone on top of the sebisus. Uh -huh. And then there's the middle mudstone, the purple. <coughs> is the purple shale, middle part of the sebisus, at least normally. But then the central area, this kind of like <coughs> blob of tannish going across this fence yeah. towards the road and kind of at, at an angle. Fuck all what we know that. <laughs> <coughs> and meanwhile, this more gray, flocky dull stone to the left, mm -hmm. that's most likely the same as this stuff of the adults. Uh -huh. And so that's why if there's any kind of transition between the two, between the adult and the cap, it's somewhere in that block. Hello. Uh, day three recap. Mountains were climbed. Literally, new heights were reached figuratively. Whichever way you'd like to flip that. Um, I also happened to finish The Fall by Albert Camus. And I will now leave you with an excerpt from it. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know that freedom is not a reward or decoration that is celebrated with champagne, or yet a gift, a box of dainties designed to make you lick your chops. Oh no, it's a chore, on the contrary, and a long distant race, quite solitary and very exhausting. No champagne, no friends raising their glasses as they look at you affectionately, alone in a forbidding room, alone in the prisoner's box before the judges, and alone to decide in face of oneself, or in the face of others' judgment. At the end of all freedom is a court sentence. That's why freedom is too heavy to bear, especially when you're down with a fever, or are distressed, or love nobody. Freedom. What are you thinking about when you're deciding like where we start for the day? Like, if it was up to me or my first thought would have just been to just walk straight at the mountain. Like we parked and you like circled around. Yeah. And kept like peeking and looking and being like, you start here, and it all just looks like tan rocks. Right. Well, part of my thinking is strategy over the for the day overall to probably. Go out east from here, mm -hmm. and then come back and go along that slope on the way back. I see. Go ahead and back. Kind of arbitrary, but 
theory. Better than not having a plan, I guess. Yeah. Look at this. A Namibian river. I feel like we should stop watching 40s and 50 movies. You know what I mean? What? Feels like zebra appropriation. Zebra? Appropriation. They're all in black and white, man. Oh my god. So you're saying this, the purple shale is from the... The shale is from the Remhukta. And the Dola Stone is from the Adita Belt. And you're saying there might be a transition between the two? Well, complicated. Um, so, further south, we saw the adults have actually conformable, like, sedimentary transition mm -hmm. where it goes from. Planar laminated dolostone, gray dolostone, to more of a tannish dolostone, to purple shale, mm -hmm. to then or like orange white limestone, and that looked similar to what the upper transition in the Sabisus is. I see. Hence, our, that was our main case for why it would be correlated with the Sabisus because uh -huh. that upward transition is similar. Yeah, the green shale. Green, the green shale and kind of the more orange brown double stone feels more like the Ramhukta. Uh huh. But, so it's weird having like fragments of that seeming to be here as well. Uh huh. Because this right here, this feels like a sedimentary transition. Yeah. Which I wasn't really expecting. It makes me wonder what that contact over there that we took was. <laughs> It's crazy to, to me that this is limestone. <laughs> it literally looks just like shale. Yep. I'm like, I gotta do it myself. Yep, go for it. <laughs> Wild. Limestone it is. So hot. So hot. Must record my first sighting of the blast crops. Look at this thing. It's really cool. And it looks cool. I swear to God. The class in this conglomerate are legitimately boldest. I have big hands. These things are. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Day four recap. Whole lot of rocks. Saw the blast crowns for the first time. Cool.
like slow and or a lot of the transitions are mm -hmm. and like thick this is very quick like mm -hmm. it's literally flaggy limestone here into what massive really painful dull stone that lasts one of my feet mm -hmm. and then straight to shale which is not and then also purple shale that lasts I guess color doesn't matter too much, but into green shell, but another foot later. Oh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> oh! Well, would you look at that? So I saw the, normally the cap is topped by this purple shale. Uh huh. It's been so intensely folded back and forth here. All the shells have been squeezed out there. What the fuck? Still solid rock, but you know. <laughs> There's literally like a valley of purple yeah. that has just been. That's, I mean, this stuff is like a mangled mess. I mean, I get the carbonates are soft, but. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> It's still rock, like... Dolomites are quite hard. <laughs> yeah, literally. What? Deformationally and physically. Oh good, this is gonna get picked up, but this is like... Stromatolite forest. Oh, that's good. I mean, look at that. Wow. And here's like from the plain view. And Dustin calls these elongated dramatolites. And you can pretty much see uh, the ridges on them in the elongated view. So I'll be like, wow. And you come back and look at that one there. And the circle walk in action. We found these cool stromatolites and the cap looking really deformed and really compressed here and dustin proceeded to do the circle walk all the way around he got down there um went started i turned around and he's coming up i thought he's coming up back to here i wonder if I can, can you see him he's like hundreds of feet away the circle walk of a field geologist Beautiful stuff. And here we have a wild field geologist. Okay, I'm not gonna do it, but you get what I'm saying. How do you feel about co-authoring a paper with me entitled, Why did geologists not think the dinosaurs were extincted by a large hammer? We having a high brown meal tonight. We eat pasta. Pasta. Last time I had, I didn't eat mush. I don't even remember the last time I didn't eat mush. Day five recap. Man, I'm ready for the day off. I'm tired. It was a um, really cool hike. Uh, really nice purple shells man even my light went out this is how tired i am well yeah it was cool cool day um getting pretty tired and exhausted but one more day to go then we get a day off Some content.
That he made you your favorite open wide. Here comes the content. It's a beautiful day to stay outside. And that's what it would have been if I wouldn't get copyright struck. I hope that I hope that my uh, camera picks up the echo. I don't know. What? Wow. Fly a drone? Yes, I just flew a drone. Yes, I just flew a drone. <laughs> the landing, bring it back close to like, generally get to like bring it back like elevation Y, or X, Y first and then drop the elevation. You move the camera down as you're starting to descend uh -huh. so you can see what you're going to land on. Do you want to bring it up before you actually land? I see. Okay, so start with just like bring it closer to us. So, so before, when you actually are landing it, you're, landing, you're slowly going down, but once it hits the ground, you can hold it down for a couple seconds uh, until it totally stops and then you release. Okay. Let's try that. Day six recap. I flew a drone. Also saw a zebra carcass. And also, um, to talk to science, because I had probably never talked science in this thing. <laughs> um, today we, it was really, it wasn't a long hike, but it was pretty short. It was a short hike, but it was really steep. Um, but today we were looking at what Dustin believed to be a less mangled portion of the Ramhukka so that we could have a good idea of like how it progressed stratigraphically um, in the less structurally mangled areas so that we could interpret um, our, the structurally mangled areas we're interested in in which it's involved with the cap and such and the blast crons. So yeah, that's the science. Day off day.
I haven't showered in over a week now. I would very much like to shower. Um, yeah, it's crazy the things that excite you. Water. It doesn't even have to be warm. Just water that I could use to shower. It would be nice. Although, in my quest, not my quest, in this uh, trajectory of becoming a mountain man, um, I learned some things about myself. One, I don't care about beds at all. My air mattress, it uh, got a hole in it on like the second night. And it has a patch kit, so I could patch it. But I kind of just like sleeping on my rock. Um, <laughs> don't know what that says about me, but either way, I'm excited. Time to eat and relax. <laughs> Oh, Kalahari. Oh my gosh. You ate the bird whole. Jesus. <laughs> Looks like you're eating good today. Wait. Maybe this is a dumb question. <laughs> but mountains stop yeah and then there's sand dunes okay so like something get eroded away like is is it completely i'm guessing it's got to be different like material because like this is not that erodible stuff like, a lot of this isn't it doesn't seem to be what we're on it yeah. i don't know i think my, my guess total guess is it's more just climatically a very dry area. Mm -hmm. It's presumably been dry for a while. So it's just kicking. And it, the the trade winds are such that it's like out. Uh -huh. So we're not getting any moisture. Not much at least. So it's just been really dry. So you just get a lot of sand dunes for a while. Uh, I think. I don't know. Actually, yeah. We're gonna go with that. Yeah, look at that. Oh, looks like that's definitely a dog. Oh. Hi, cutie! <laughs> Come on, little guy, you can do it. I believe in you. Just get right up to the. There you go. A zebra trail. Yeah. I'm watching zebra walk up a zebra trail. Can they hear me? Probably because they stop each time I talk. Yeah. They're a little quiet at this point, but it's fun seeing their dynamics. Uh huh. As they stop and go, uh, checking things out. They all kind of stop and go together. Yeah. Day eight recap. Um, first day back after the break. Uh, it was kind of tough actually. Being like having internet and stuff reminded me that I have a life outside of this, and that was sort of weird for me last night. Uh, but just get used to it. 
Um, here we just mapped a lot of the area that we had already looked at on two days ago at day six. Um, so not too much to talk about rock-wise. Saw some more zebras. Um, yeah, reading a long way gone. Um, Memoirs of a Bush Boy Soldier by Ishmael Bea and Oh, it's tough to read. Um, really, really tough book. Um, highly recommend it, though. Um, a, amazing perspective on how life, how really terrible life can be. Really hits home for me. Um, the author who went through a civil war happens to be from Sierra Leone, which is a West African country. So a lot of the references and stuff that he says about his childhood are very similar to the same sorts of like stories that my parents would tell me, um, being that Nigeria and Sierra Leone, I guess, have a, people have similar heritage and tell similar stories. So yeah, it's, um, tough, but really, really useful to read. So I highly recommend it. they run I don't like it oh they're looking back again Day nine recap. Today was Animal Farm. Saw crazy animals. Of uh, of course, my camera died, and I forgot to bring a backup battery, so all the animals came out. Um, we saw baboons on three separate occasions. The last of which being a troop. They accidentally walked into their territory. That was a little sketchy, but we got up. Saw two springbok, and they uh, make the funniest noises. They sound like three-year-old toddlers, um, which is hilarious. Also, saw. What else did we see? Like seven or eight zebras at least um, in like a big pack. It was really cool. And then also saw like five, at least five um, dossies, <laughs> which are these really funny, chunky groundhog things. Oh, here comes Dustin. Hello. <laughs> the planet that never sleeps a poem by me josh anadu endless stimulation endless stimulation it seems as though man is drawn to endless stimulation what is wrong with me what is wrong with you that we are so drawn to endless stimulation like a moth to the light, stimulation draws us near and near and near still. So I journeyed to the African desert to escape endless stimulation. No phone to use, no Twitter to see, no internet to plug me into the deafening buzz of man's misery. But as I sit in the dead of night, no civilization anywhere in sight, what surrounds me, yes, endless stimulation, endless stimulation. A bat's quiet swings, rustling beside me, a zebra snorting in, oh, I don't know, 
a jackal cackling away, its dinner delicious, an oryx bellowing at any fear that approaches, a grasshopper chirping, a familiar tune, a baboon howling, not too dissimilar from what we humans do. And even when, for a moment, it all seems to cease, the mountains themselves appear to whisper endlessly. The babbling brook, well, the name is quite apt. The breath of a boy, alive, surely. Endless stimulation, endless stimulation. On this rock we call home, we did not invent endless stimulation. Just another derivative and a poor one at that.